The Australian Transport Safety Bureau's final report into the collision with water of a Beaver float plane at Jerusalem Bay on New Year's Eve in 2017 has identified that there were elevated levels of carbon monoxide in the aircraft's cabin, which resulted in the pilot and five passengers having higher than normal levels of carboxyhemoglobin in their blood. The ATSB's investigation determined that it was likely that the pilot's ability to safely operate the aircraft was significantly degraded by this carbon monoxide exposure. The aircraft was operating on a chartered fly-dine experience flight from a restaurant at Cottage Point, about 26 kilometres north of Sydney Harbour in the Kiringai Chase National Park. This animation was created using photographic and witness evidence from the ATSB's investigation and has been produced to illustrate the approximate flight path flown by the aircraft. It should not be used for other analysis. Shortly after 3pm, the DHC-2 Beaver, registered November Oscar Oscar, commenced taxiing from Cottage Point towards a designated takeoff area in Cowan Creek, as per the operator's procedures, for a 20-minute return flight to Rose Bay in Sydney Harbour. A short time later, the aircraft became airborne and climbed straight ahead before commencing a right turn heading towards the Hawkesbury River. The passenger occupying the front right seat next to the pilot took these photographs through the front and right windows during the flight. These photographs were recovered from the camera found in the wreckage and played a crucial role in the investigation, helping to build a clear picture of the aircraft's initial flight path. While continuing on its northeasterly heading, the aircraft then made a right turn with a shallow bank angle of between 15 to 20 degrees. The right turn continued over Cowan Water, where the last photograph was taken by the passenger. Photo 412 showed the aircraft heading in a southerly direction towards Cowan Bay. At that time, the aircraft was estimated to be at an altitude of 98 feet. The aircraft completed an almost 270 degree turn and was still configured for climb with its flap set at 15 degrees. The Beaver was observed to fly in a westerly direction towards and then into Jerusalem Bay. Several witnesses reported hearing the aircraft's engine and stated that the sound was constant and normal. After entering Jerusalem Bay, a known confined area, witnesses reported seeing the aircraft flying along the southern shoreline below the height of the surrounding terrain. Near to the entrance of Pinter Bay, the aircraft was observed to enter a steep right turn. During the right turn, the aircraft's nose suddenly dropped before the aircraft collided with the water, about 95 metres from the northern shore. Tragically, all on board were fatally injured. When the aircraft was retrieved from the water, it was transported to a secure hangar at Bankstown Airport for further examination. There was no air traffic control radar, satellite surveillance data or mayday broadcast from the pilot. Additionally, the aircraft did not have an onboard recording device to aid the investigation. However, the investigation team was assisted by a number of people who were on the water that day and who had witnessed the aircraft during various stages of the flight. Badly damaged, the camera used by the passenger seated next to the pilot was examined at the ATSB's technical facilities in Canberra. Investigators carefully transplanted memory chips from the damaged and corroded compact flash memory card onto a donor memory card. All the images on the card were able to be recovered. This included 120 photographs taken on the day of the accident of which 22 images were taken while on board the aircraft during the accident flight. These images provided investigators with valuable information about the timing and initial flight path of the aircraft. The ATSB engaged an aviation medical specialist to assist with progressing the investigation. Working with other medical specialists, they closely examined all aspects of the pilot's medical history, including electrocardiogram traces and medical reports. When no pre-existing medical condition became evident, it was recommended that the carbon monoxide levels of the pilot should be considered. Subsequent toxicological testing indicated that the pilot and all passengers had elevated levels of carboxyhemoglobin at the time of the accident. A resulting re-examination of the aircraft found that several cracks were present in the exhaust collector ring, which very likely released exhaust gas into the engine bay. The ATSB also identified that there were several bolts missing that secured the magneto access panels to the main firewall. 
During testing using an exemplar aircraft, it was found that the exhaust gases comprising carbon monoxide could enter the cabin through the missing bolt holes in the main firewall. It was also found that the access panel bolts used by the maintenance organisation were worn and included a combination of modified and non-specific bolts. This increased the risk of the bolts either not tightening securely on the installation or becoming loose during operations. In order to communicate this significant evidence to the aviation industry, in July 2020, the ATSB released two safety advisory notices. The first, which reminded aircraft maintainers of the importance of conducting thorough inspections of exhaust systems and firewalls with consideration for potential carbon monoxide exposure. And the second, strongly encouraged operators, owners and pilots of piston engine aircraft to install or carry a carbon monoxide detector with an active warning to alert pilots of elevated levels of carbon monoxide in the cabin. The ATSB's final report contains recommendations including the mandatory fitment of active carbon monoxide detectors. The use of an attention-attracting carbon monoxide detector provides pilots with the best opportunity to detect carbon monoxide exposure before it adversely affects their ability to control the aircraft or they become incapacitated. Operators and owners of piston engine aircraft are strongly encouraged to install a carbon monoxide detector with an active warning to alert pilots to the presence of elevated levels of carbon monoxide in the cabin. If not provided, pilots are encouraged to carry a personal carbon monoxide detection and alerting device. The ATSB is also recommending the fitment of lightweight flight recording devices in small passenger carrying aircraft. Recording devices have long been recognised as an invaluable tool for investigators in identifying the factors behind an accident and their contribution to aviation safety is irrefutable. Such systems are generally only mandated and fitted on larger aircraft. However, advancements in technology mean that self-contained image, audio and flight data recording systems can be cost-effectively fitted to all aircraft. This accident highlights the benefits of having these devices fitted to passenger carrying aircraft under 5,700 kilograms. You can read the final report on the ATSB's website, atsb.gov.au, by searching AO-2017-118.